Hey everyone, my name is Wedge. Before we get started with this week's Commander video, I absolutely have to bring a certain Commander podcast to your attention. The Command Zone is easily one of the best podcasts out there, definitely at the top of the Commander podcast list. I was on one of their episodes months ago, but they just keep getting better every week. I highly suggest you check them out, you will not be disappointed. If you enjoy Commander at all, informational and super entertaining, Jimmy and Josh are just, they're the best. Please go listen to a friend of the channel, it would mean a lot. This week's Commander Deck Tech is another viewer selection, and we're featuring one of the more fun token commanders in the format. Firmly in two of the best colors for swarming with creatures, Riss the Redeemed is our featured commander. Riss is a 1-1 one, one for 1 white or green mana, which is absolutely puny. We recommend you don't attack with him until you can find a way to make him bigger. He's too small to do anything in combat. There are two abilities here that make the card significantly less boring. Riss's first ability puts a 1-1 elf warrior token in play for 3 mana. It doesn't seem like much, but activate it a few times and you have a small army at your command. Still not enough, the second ability will be to your liking. For 6 mana, you can put a copy of each token creature you control onto the battlefield. Yep, anything. Battle of spirits, sapperlings, golems, anything you want. Doubling the size of your army will almost always pay off since we have to beat down our opponents with swarms of creatures. So we need three things to make Riss work. Mana to get the most out of his abilities, cards that generate tons of tokens, and then a way to crush our opponents. Luckily we have all three covered in this deck and even managed to sneak a combo in there too. Normally we put the mana base at the end, but we realize that the lands and accelerators are pretty crucial with a mana hungry commander. We have seven lands that can get you either color, two hideaway lands and win brisk heights and mossware bridge to sneak in spells, and even Kielder and Outpost and Vidu Ghazi to put creatures into play. Orin Reef the Vastwood and Gavany Township help make your guys bigger while Strip Mine and Wasteland pick off problem lands. There is one land that is fairly essential to the game plan, so much so that we play crop rotation just to get it more reliably. Guy's Cradle is capable of enabling some crazy plays with this deck and only gets better with each creature you churn out. Only real downside is that the card is expensive and there isn't really an alternative, but it is worth every penny. With the right setup, it's easy to get double digit amounts of mana off of one Cradle activation. We have some non-land spells to help power out more creatures and ensure you can hit your late game. Oracle of Moldiah allows you to see the top card of your library and play an extra land each turn. Voring Clicks doubles your mana while also making your opponents skip untapping their lands when they actually use them. Mana Reflection and Mirari's Wake straight up double your mana. If you have the choice between Reflection or Wake, go for the Reflection for the more explosive combo with Guy's Cradle. We need creatures to make cards like Riss and Cradle good, and this deck is chock full of them. Cards like Armada Worm, Rampaging Ballast, and Tristani Summoner bring plenty of friends to the party. Some creatures require a heavier mana investment and require you to sink resources, but in return you get a near unlimited amount of dudes. Jade Mage, Ant Queen, Heliod, and Fidugazi Guild Mage all provide creatures as long as you have mana floating around. Wolfbriar Elemental is more interesting as you can only get the creatures when you pay for Multi Kicker. It is a solid follow up to bounce back from a Wrath effect or if you just have a bunch of open mana. Return to Ravnica brought the populate mechanic and new ways to generate creature tokens. Tristani Selesnia's voice will gain you a lot of life while Scion of Vidugazi lets you populate when it hits play. We also brought spells to create creatures, some of them featured in previous deck decks. Nomad's Assembly doubles your creature count and if they stay in play, rebounds and doubles them again. Martial Coup is one of the deck's two sweepers and conveniently also gives you soldiers to apply pressure with. We have Increasing Devotion, which is aggressively costed at both 5 mana and its flashback cost. Another flashback card, Parallel Evolution, is a one-shot risk that affects every token in play so use it wisely. Secure the Waste came out with Dragon's Atar here and might be one of the better token generators yet. Aggressively costed and instant speed, sign me up. Luminarch Ascension is a white enchantment that makes angels and everyone else angry at you. Lastly, we have Scroll Nest. Sure, it doesn't look too impressive at first. You put it on a land and tap the land to put a 1 1 scroll into play. Harmless enough, but combine it with Earthcraft and you have all the scrolls you want. There's a lot of things you can do with infinite creatures, best one being killing your opponents with them. Doubling Season and Parallel Lives are staples of the deck, doubling the number of tokens an effect you control would put into play. If you're playing tokens in green, you need both of these cards. 
So we have all these creatures, but most of them are small, and it'll be difficult to push 40 damage through. Don't worry, we have that covered. We have a Chromas Memorial to turn your guys into mini Chromas, and Eldrazi Monument to turn them into something maybe a little more menacing. Triumph of the Hordes is a wild card and more of a trick to get one or two players instead of a total win condition. For a turn, creatures you control get plus one, plus one, infect, and trample. Push 10 damage through and you've got yourself a dead player. Save it for that, though, because if you can't get 10 damage through, the card's pretty worthless. Elish Norn makes your creatures huge while also clearing away and shrinking blockers. Jazal Goldmane, a familiar face to us, pops up in the 99 as another way to beef up your creatures. Crater Hoof Behemoth is the biggest of them all, with the potential to create massive amounts of damage and likely end the game. You have a pair of enchantments that, when paired with creatures, can get out of control fast. Cather's Crusade puts a plus one plus one counter on each creature when a creature comes into play, which is insane with any effect that puts in multiple creatures at the same time. Beastmaster Ascension requires a little more work and requires creatures to attack, but if you get seven counters on it, the smallest creature you can produce is a 6-6. Six -six. If all else fails, make a bunch of weenies and try to punch through anyway. Concordant Crossroads isn't really an anthem, but gives all creatures haste. Since it helps your opponents, it will likely sit in your hand until you absolutely need it. It speeds up some of the win conditions in the deck and potentially acts as a combo piece. A big problem with this deck is putting a lot out on the board and having to wait a full turn to see if they survive. Crossroads solves that problem. Card draw is not white or green strongest quality, but we make do with what we have. Skull Clamp is essential to the game plan, turning your early elf warrior tokens into card advantage to set up your late game or just to refill your hand. Mentor of the Meek will give you cards off your smaller tokens if you have the mana. Shamanic Revelation is a fairly new favorite forge card that will likely fill your hand and then some. If you have a 4 power creature, prepare to gain a ton of life. Garrick Primal Hunter serves two roles in this deck, making creatures each turn, or ideally refill your hand if you control any big creature. Sylvan Library is a staple green card in Commander and lets you draw extra cards on your upkeep for 4 life, or can just fix the top of your deck at worst. Survival of the Fittest is a repeatable tutor effect that can dig for the specific creature you need, or just get rid of something worse. Illidamri's Call, Enlightened Tutor, and Court of Calling help give the deck a respectable amount of tutor effects and get some of the key pieces. And that about wraps up the deck. Compared to some other decks we've teched, this one is relatively straightforward. Let us know what you think, and as you can see, we're always open to suggestions for new commanders to deliver deck techs for, which means that you should definitely leave your commanders in the comments. Tell us what you want. Jeez. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Magic the Gathering information you could ever need. This is the Mana Source. I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.